Hello and welcome back to another Man Meat Unreal tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at a simple blueprint setup. How to turn on a lamp or any light within Unreal in a game. Uh, so that's it. Stay tuned. Here we go. All right, so to follow along, uh, start a new project. I'm using, um, I was gonna say Blender then, uh, Unreal 4.24. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start by selecting games. And I'm gonna go with third person. You can go with first if you want, but third, just so, so we're both on the same page, do a third person. Next, we're gonna make sure it's blueprints and we will make sure we've got starter content with starter content. And give it our thing a name, let's call it Lamp. And we'll click, yeah, we just call it Lamp, whatever. And then click Create, and then wait for it to load up, and then we will start. All right, so when it's loaded up, you should have something that looks like this exactly. Ah, uh, so let's start our lamp, right? Because we've got start the content, we will have a lamp model already um, within our project if you click on content it's going to be in the start of content but we don't need to get that yet uh, let's start by right clicking and creating a folder we will close call this blueprints i guess call it whatever you want really oops put a capital l all right blueprints and then enter to open it up right inside here we're going to right click and click blueprint class and we're going to create an actor and we're going to name this bp for blueprint underscore um lamp there you go inventive enter i'll, I'll double click it to open it up mine's opened up in the wrong window and by default you have this little white ball a lot of people delete this but i actually like it um it's the default scene route i like to keep it um, it's up to you if you do or not but we're gonna start off by bringing in a static mesh i'm gonna call this lamp nice and then we're gonna bring in a light which i th yeah where we go we we'll go for a spotlight and you can call it something but i'm gonna keep it a spotlight that'll do all right select your lamp up here and go over to the side and under the set static mesh section you can click the none over there and search for lamp and we've got ceiling lamp or wall lamp uh we'll go for a wall lamp and it'll bring in the static mesh for the wall lamp. Okay, nicely done. So when we select our spotlight here, you can see it's obviously giving off light in the wrong location. So hit E on your keyboard and we can rotate this 90 degrees and then hit W to go back to transform and then go up. And we wanna go about there. And to, to pan around, if you haven't done this before, you hold Alt and then left click and drag if it's not centered like this, just click F on your keyboard, it'll center it. Um, and then you can see what's going on. The cone needs to be widened a bit. So we're looking at the, I think it's the attenuation radius. No, it's not, ignore that. The outer cone, outer cone angle, that'll be the one, there you go. So that looks about right, looking good. Okay, so that's the model done. Now what about the actual workings of it? If we go to the event graph, click on that, and we get rid of those. And what we're gonna do instead is, we're gonna bring in, oh, hang on, go back, viewport, select your, that's it, select, ah, select your cone again, your spotlight. I'm gonna turn this off. So where it says visible right here under rendering, I'm gonna turn that off, because we don't it on straight away. We wanna be able to, to turn it on ourselves. So let's go to the event graph. Oh, actually, I'm so sorry. Go back to your viewport and we want to bring in a box collider or box collision. So if you type in collision, you get different options there. Let's go, let's go for a box and we we'll call this trigger. Oops, trigger. And we want to make this a bit bigger. The wall lamp is going to be, you know, low head height, maybe a bit higher than head. So we want to bring this down. But in fact, bring it up so that it's about level with the floor, maybe a little bit off the floor. There you go. And we actually need to select both the point lamp 
and shift select to select the the mesh as well and bring this up all right okay i can see what's going on here right now everything was selected because we've got it parented to the to the lamp so we need to that the spotlight can be parented to the lamp but the trigger needs to be dragged up to this uh, default scene click attach so that it's not parented to the lamp and now we can select both of these and bring them up to i don't know it'd be a bit of trial and error i'd say about 120 there so you can see up here location 120 let's try that now select our collision box press uh r on the keyboard and let's make it a bit bigger Go back to W. We're going to pan around this and have a look because the wall is going to be here. So we want to drag this over. So it can be about there. That's fine. Press R again so we can take that out a little. Bring it up a little and then press W to go back to that. And we can just line this up, say, to the wall. And then that'll be fine for what we need it for. Well, I'll just make size of it bigger right okay happy days so with this trigger selected let's go to the event graph scroll down the bottom over here and we want to stretch that out we want to get a begin overlap so press plus on that so this means when we overlap the trigger box in other words when we walk into the box we want something to happen let's say toggle uh the toggle spotlight and it automatically brings in the spotlight reference. We plunk it down by there. Okay, so we will compile that. And let me just dock this up there. And then we press play. Oh, I didn't bring my box lamp, my uh, wall lamp in yet. So let's drag it into the scene. We put it over by there, press F to focus on it. And we're going to need to rotate this 90 degrees and just put it in so it's lined up with the wall nicely done and let's press play go over here and as we go up to it the wall lamp comes on i need to bring that lamp a little bit out let's go back into the uh, blueprint into the viewport click on the lamp press f to full focus in on it if you hold down alt and the right mouse button you can move your mouse back and forth and zoom in to how you want it so you can see there it's just disappearing out of the side there so we just want to bring this that's a bit too far so up up here we've got the snap set and just bring it down to bring down to one so we got precise control let's bring it in To about there this bulb is part of the mesh by the way it's not the lamp this is a lamp for you so now we've brought it out of the wall we should get better light this compile and play let's go over here there we are that's better light so there it is it comes on nicely the only thing is it stays on so let's have it go back off so the way we do that is go into the event graph and we want to bring in we select the trigger scroll to the bottom again and we're going to get a component end overlap like so and we want to wire that up to there as well because then when we walk in it'll toggle the visibility on and when we go out it'll toggle it off compile the uh, play go over comes on go away comes off or goes off right so what about if we want the player to press a button like the F key, what if we want to do that rather than it just turn it on automatically? So if we grab shift select those two, move them out the way. What we can do is drag off that begin overlap pin and enable we got there enable input so this will bring in uh, enable the input of the controller whether it be the keyboard or the um or the mouse or the game controller um 
so we want to want to get the controller so let's just drag off there and we want to get player controller right there shove that in there uh, so that's enabled that uh, when we leave we want to disable that so let's plunk that up no hang on sorry my fault we want to get a disable input so that it disables when we leave and again the controller into the player controller slot there and then maybe we could have some text let's kill this by holding alt and clicking maybe we want to have some text pop up on the screen as well so if we go into the viewport add component type in text we get text render this will be the player tip so i'll just call it the player tip and over in the if you scroll back up there in the text section here you can type in press f so that's the the tip to the player let's have a look oops then double f press f so that'll come up to tell and we we'll go down here where it's got uh, the alignment and go center bring that up a little bit bring it forward a tiny bit so it doesn't go through the wall so that'll pop up to tell the player they can press f and then it'll turn the light on let's go in the event graph we want to pull out of here and we want to um, put toggle um, trigger and it's got the trigger there no not the trigger do 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 get rid of that trigger we want the player tip get player tip okay so that'll toggle the visibility and we want to disable it when we leave the box so let's test that out one thing as well this play thing if you click the arrow at the bot next to it there and click new editor window it'll pop up in the new window which you can maximize if you like let's go over here there we go oh it's the wrong way around look it is there and then it disappears when we get close if you've done that the wrong way around let's go over here and we want to go to the viewport click the text and scroll down to how's it scrolling up where's it gone there it is rendering visible just like the lamp we're going to turn it off by default so it'll toggle on and toggle off and because we opened in a new editor window we don't have to switch windows anymore we just press play and there it is so it'll toggle on when we enter the box and toggle off when we don't right then so let's get the functionality of the lamp let's move this over a little bit now there's a couple of ways we can do this if we type in event and then oops f no that does not work it always seems to be different um type in keyboard f there you go input events keyboard events f pressed i want to toggle it on and well that's it go over now f toggle it on f will toggle it off on off on off and it only works if we're in that box we press f now not working if i go in the box like text comes up press f on press f off out the box goes away awesome but the thing is later on if we decide to change the f key or the interact key to something else we'd have to come into every blueprint that we use this and change the oops it's auto saving we'd have to change this node to whatever key and another problem of course being once it finishes that if uh, the player is using a game controller it won't work so you'd, you would have to go in here and type um, oops gamepad bottom face which is basically the, the, the face keys are like the um, on a playstation controllers x squared triangle circle on an xbox is a b x y i believe don't know much about xbox so you'd have to plug that in and then if you wanted a different controller again you'd have to do another one and then plug that in so we want to get rid of those we want to find a different way if you go into the project settings and click on input you will have your action mappings and your access mappings so it's all the all the controller controls these are all set up for you 
by default so you move forward is w s is a minor scale up down then you've got the gamepad controls you've got the vive the oculus and you know whatever else they're all done for you jump is also done and it's set there to the gamepad phase bottom button or button bottom so we don't want to use that one we can change that if we want um so what we can do is we can add an action mapping called interact and then set it to keyboard did I go past it? yes I did F alright and we can also add another one which will be gamepad face bottom let's say right which is circle on a um, PlayStation 4 controller I believe it's X I think or it's B, maybe B on a Xbox. So what we can do then instead is because that's in there now, we can right click in here and click and um, type in interact and we get action event interact, which means it's the interact key, whatever keys are mapped to that in the settings. You can have any number of different keys mapped to the interact. Now, if, if an interact button is click pressed, it will toggle on and off compile play and I can use my keyboard I can press F and I can also pick up my controller this is my controller and press circle because uh, I'm using a PS4 controller so circle on and off on and off on and off um, and that's about it I think I'll leave it there for this tutorial because it's gone on a bit long so the next one I'm gonna start doing doors I'm gonna show you how to do doors opening and closing doors and all sorts Double doors, single doors, all sorts of doors. So, hope, hope this was helpful for you. See you in the next one. Ciao, blah, for now. Bye.